run out of pre-streamed powder. If you have some pre-streamed powder that you would like to donate to me, please call 1-800- Hello and welcome to the stream. Uh, we are now live according to Twitch. Uh, give me one second here. I'm, uh, I am going to do something that uh, just wastes your time basically. Um, and basically there's someone here who I might be able to help with Java if they want help. Uh, but uh, they might not want help, so we are working that out right now. Um, um, wow. Okay, well, we can't spend too much time with this guy, so I'll just basically tell him, um, if you, who might actually be watching the stream because I told him the stream is now running. Um, um, so I need to get back to my zero viewers here. Uh, let's see how many, oh, I'm not even going to check, we probably have... I'll check just because I said I'm not going to check. Um, yep, nobody here but me and the chickens. The chickens, of course, being Nightbot. Okay, um, so we were looking yesterday or last time, it's which was not yesterday, uh, four years ago. No, just kidding. That's a little leap years joke there, which doesn't make any sense now that you think about it. Uh, I was thinking about going on to dating sites and trying to find someone today uh, because then we would only have to celebrate our anniversary once every four years or if my track record uh, continues anything like it has, never. Um, but uh, but anyway, that was a little wacky leap years humor there. Um, okay, so we were trying to find the stars that are closest to Beetlejuice in the HYG catalog, and we did it, but now we have issues printing it because uh, Stack Exchange won't print tables nicely unless you use LaTeX, and it doesn't even allow you to use the tabular macro in LaTeX. Uh, but we did find a solution we found it's not that hard to create a table. We're going to write a JavaScript application that does it, even though I originally tried to write it in Perl, and I should probably go to that Perl script and say it's never going to be written, but hey, who knows. Um, there's a few other things we're going to be doing here. Um, of course, my answer, I'm going to say, because I advise specifically not to use HYG in one of my comments, so I'm going to have to mention that, yes, I'm ignoring my own advice. The answer is not going to be complete because, of course, there's many more stars, and I will look at Gaia or Hipparchos later, but the problem is neither of them have really good distances because their parallax measurements aren't that good. Uh, the other main thing that I really should have noticed earlier is that Beetlejuice is about 500 light years away. That means we're seeing it the way it was 500 years ago. Uh, and physicists will sometimes say, well, you have to think of 500 years ago as being now on Beetlejuice, but physicists are stupid um, for many reasons, not just that one. Um, that and ba basically, physicists are people who are not smart enough to be mathematicians. That's, that's how that goes. Um, so we will look at the, see where uh, these stars will be in 500 years, and of course we'll generalize that to other stars as well. Um, because the guy's original question, which isn't part of the question he actually asked, um, wow, I just realized I don't have the URL for question. I'll go ahead and put that down. I need to find where that question actually, I have it favorited so it shouldn't be an issue. Um, the question the guy really wants to ask is if Betelgeuse goes nova or supernova, which really just because it's dimming doesn't mean it will. I mean, that's just like a sort of a... Oh, I thought that was a little bubble on my screen. Um, but no. Uh, because he wants to know if any of the nearby stars will be affected. Uh, and since the nearest star we found so far is 40 light years away, probably not. And it's highly unlikely that even proper motion in 500 years is going to have any effect on it. But this is, again, one of those cool things where you do something that you know won't change anything, but then you can mention it in your answer and people think you're smart. It's like, oh, that guy's real clever. He thought about fi the 500-year light year gap. He must be a genius. I'm not, of course, but you don't even have to know that. And then I'm also going to insult physicists because I'm going to point out that if you really do think of uh, Betelgeuse's current time as 500 years ago, you run into the Andromeda paradox. Um, which I won't explain, but I'll mention. So that's another reason I'm going to pound on physicists a little bit, because you have to be careful. Um, for some reason in astronomy, they don't like it when you uh, pound too hard on physicists. So you can make this sort of side, snide remark um, without getting in trouble. Um, also, I discovered MathJax. So what would be really, really cool is, OK, it looks like we have a, our friend might be joining us. Um, give me one second here. Let's get him on. Let's get him on the uh, the phone here. This is going to be Discord. Let's see. Uh, let's okay. Uh, uh, let's 
go ahead and call him and this should all work perfectly like it never does. That's the ringing sound of Discord. Hello. I cannot hear you. The green circle is showing, but I cannot hear you. Let me see if there's something I need to do here. Oh, um, yeah, maybe. Hang on. I need to put my headphones in. I usually just... Okay, if, if this... Oh, I heard that. I don't know what the hell that was, but I heard it. Um, if this might blow up my computer, if it does, I'll be gone for like five, ten minutes, but it shouldn't. Okay, say something now. I hear like clicking noises. Um, can you speak up a little bit? I don't know if it's that you're soft. It's just okay. I don't have mute or deaf, and I'm guessing you can hear me. Um, actually, uh, you might want to mute the stream because uh, there's going to be okay. I heard like I hear clicking sounds. I don't know if that's just bad connection on my part. Um, it does show that we have a pretty bad looking bandwidth here. It says ice checking is yellow and it's not looking too good. Let me take a look at our uh, more statistics here. We're connected through the US South server. If you want to try a different server, we might have better luck. And also just briefly really speak up or just play something loud so I can make sure it's not a volume issue. Yep, I see your green circle flashing. I do not hear you. Um, and this is fun for all the people. Okay, I hear clicking sounds like you're trying to say something, but it doesn't quite clear. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a, I'm going to recall real quick, or actually, why don't you call this time? So leaving the call now. And we will wait. And uh, this is, this is fun. Um, and la 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 la. We'll wait until our friend can call us back. And let me go ahead and paste the, um, let me go ahead and seriously misuse, actually, hang on, I think there is a, a temp directory. What the hell? Really? Okay. Could have sworn there was. Uh, we, we, I am going to copy over the uh, URL uh, that we're going to be using. Um, so, oh, okay, when I'm speaking, it is echoing. Um, is that the echo from the Twitch stream? I know you can't see what I'm doing. People love the stream. Okay. So, this is great, you guys. People watching the stream. Not that there is anyone, but if you're on YouTube or whatever, and you, you, you know, you think, God damn it, I've got to fast forward through this part because there's nothing useful until I get to something useful, you will be fast forwarding forever. Not just through this stream, but my future streams. I can pretty much tell you this entire stream is useless, I'm useless, the universe is useless. So if that makes you want to go kill yourself, do it. That's actually something that's better than watching my stream. Um, also, wounding yourself is better. Um, there's so many things that are better than, than watching me stream. Uh, I mean, probably like a million of them. Okay, so we're still waiting uh, here, and we are uh, waiting for a star to fall is a song by um, Boy Meets Girl, I think. Uh, an old, old 80s song, but uh, good one. Okay, we are, we are waiting here. Uh, let me check my voice settings. Okay, let me make a suggest. I don't know if you can hear me on Twitch, but um, I mean, Kaiser's the guy we're trying to connect up here. Um... But sometimes in, in Discord, if you just call again, it somehow magically works. Well, one of the things is that uh, Discord has multiple servers uh, to connect calls. And US South is a server that's pretty close to me, but you know, I kind of wish now that I knew where Kaiser was. I don't think he's in North America, uh, or necessarily our, our planet. Uh, I believe he might have time traveled uh, from the 1920s, uh, wh where he was in charge of Germany. Uh, at the time. And, and remember, that's World War I, which is like the better of the two wars. It's not quite as ugly as World War II. So, World War I, you know, Kaiser... What the hell was his name, anyway? Kaiser Permanente? No, that's a medical facility. 
Kaiser Wilhelm, yeah, better person than Adolf Hitler. Both bad, but the Kaiser wins out in that uh, fight. Um, Genghis Khan, probably worse than Kaiser, uh, Kaiser Wilhelm because um, he subdued a lot. I mean, they were Chinese people, but they were still people. And that was a very racist comment that, if someone takes seriously, could get me into trouble. But of course, I am joking. I love Chinese people. I love Chinese food. I li love those Chinese finger traps. I love fidget spinners, which I don't know if they're from China, but um, uh, it is Pomodoro time, but it is the first one, so we will skip it. We might skip others if we can get uh, Mr. Kaiser on the line. Um, and we're going to see how that's going right now. Um, oh, yeah, sure, I can do that. Uh, he just asked if I could join the voice channel. I will do that. Oh, actually, I'll do a double check. Hello. Okay. I'm not hearing you at all. Okay. Can you hear me on the voice channel, not just on Twitch? There's, there's like a little flicker of something. Ugh. I get the feeling maybe my speakers are not connected properly. Whoa. Okay. Give me a sec here. I'm going to reconnect my speakers. This will probably blow my machine up. So if I'm gone, that's why. Okay, try now. Okay, I'm going to reload Discord. It's possible that for some reason it lost permission to my, uh, to my speakers. I don't know why that would happen. I mean, it's still making those funny noises, so... Commence monosaturated goodening. That's, of course, one of the humorous message is that you can get... Wow. Okay, now it says I'm, I'm muted on this, but I'm still there. Authenticating. Um, okay, this is not good. Ah, uh, there we go. Allow. I can hear you. Say something. Yeah. There you are. I'm here. Awesome. You're not from Germany, are you? No, no. I forgot. What, what was the problem? Um, I don't know. I just reloaded the page. Uh, it asked me for microphone permission, which, of course, I already had. Uh, but I gave it microphone permission again, and somehow that fixed the the uh, the speaker permission. Um, so so you're, you're using Discord on your web page? Um, uh, Oh, I don't have a desktop client. Yeah, there's no desktop. The Linux desktop client either doesn't exist or doesn't work for me. I forget which one. Um, okay. Uh, all right, let me quickly find the URL that you gave me. Oh, shiny. Wait. Uh-oh. We have a problem. Oh, it is, I know, but I copied it somewhere where it's not showing. Oh, fuck. I know what's wrong. <laughs> I put it in the top temp directory. And I also forgot what name it was, so that's that's really I'm brilliant. Um, this is the kind of stupidity my users are used to. Temp. Seriously, did I fuck that up? Hang on. Sorry. I realize I realize now we're taking more time um, mm -hmm. to um, let me just do this uh, to fix this problem than it would be to redo it. But that is a common thing on this stream. That is, in fact, one of the one of the hallmarks of this stream is okay. There we go. Is that we uh, we waste as much time as possible. So, very happy with that. Um, okay. What the hell? That's not what I meant to do. Test.txt. Okay. There we are. Let's go ahead and bring that up in Replit. Where are you from? If you're willing to share, uh, roughly. Yeah, I'm from here, USA. So. Okay, uh, I don't know. Well, Kaiser is a German name, so I thought maybe you were Kaiser Wilhelm. <laughs> thought maybe you were Kaiser Wilhelm. Returned. Okay, oh. now this is going to take a little bit more of our screen space, so we're going to try to widen this a little bit because I'm in a small VM, and of course the Firefox does not take up all the space. Okay, so this probably will not work as is because it uses the um, the uh, Discord. Um, API. API. Let's see what happens if we run it. I mean, okay. It just it won't work. Let's see. Well, let's see what it does. 
Uh, r class calculated public. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, yeah, it won't work. Um, so what we want to do here, by the way, and uh, I guess I'll go ahead and uh, uh, introduce it to the people who are uh, who are listening, the non-people who are not listening. Um, we're trying to write a uh, parser for mathematical expressions uh, that you know follows the order of operations and follows parentheses. So it knows how to calculate, uh, you know, things like uh, um, that, uh, and it does that correctly, and it doesn't do it left to right. And there's a couple of ways to approach this, and we will probably not, probably mess it up somehow. Okay, so what you might want to do here is uh, we want to try to fresh, I would say write a fresh Java uh, subroutine that does the parsing for you, and then you can import that subroutine directly into your, uh, into your uh, Discord bot. Should I write them, uh, write one right now? Well, I was gonna. I was gonna basically uh, kill this page and bring up uh, Replit's default Java page, which I think is very minimal. So there are some parts in there which I could copy. And okay, okay, okay. Go for it then. Yeah, find. I mean, find the parts that are not. Let's see. Let me take a look here. Calculate. Oh, good. The public class calculate. Wow. It extends listener adapter. Yeah. Okay. So this calculate does both, it l reads the message and it does the calculation. Uh, but, yeah. Okay. So you might want to break that. Uh, 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 scroll down, you can see right. the function method of the string calc. Okay, and here at line 21 is where I'm seeing the basically um, if command 0 is not calc, is uh, not, not calc, god damn it, if <laughs> It's exclamation point calc. Then you go ahead and do all these other things, which I think this is the meat of the program that we're looking at here. Um, and yep, this looks like it's the. Um, so it looks Just like. Bunch of arrays. Yeah, I don't know how much of this is commented out, but um, okay. So I think I mean we might want to keep the comments. The portion that I've highlighted, I think, is the portion that we want to keep. But let me look further down. There might be more crap down here. Oh, there's more. Never mind. So all of this is stuff we might want to keep. Um, let me suggest um, copy all of this to another file, the whole thing, even with the garbage in it. Uh, and then we'll start fresh, but we can start copying and pasting out of the, um, out of the other file if we oh. need it. You want me to do that for you? I don't know if I can, but are you still here? We're talking with Kaiser Wilhelm, uh, responsible for World War I, um, and trying now to program a mathematical expression parser in Java, which might be worse. Still there? Hello? Okay, we might have some issues. Okay, good, you're back. All right, are you still in the rep and stuff? Looking at it, just a minute. Okay. At one point, they did let you. By the way, if you want, you can use the GitHub the Git function. Can I do that? I probably can't. Shit. Yeah, I can't. It, it'll if I do a try to get uh, if I try to get. Never mind. That's the wrong button. I made a copy of it, but that doesn't help anybody. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so what's our status here? There's a way you can go multiplayer and let me do it as well, but I don't really see how. And then I can do it for you. It's not a, it's not difficult. You just select all and paste. Um, but are you having other issues? Uh, I mean, sh what should I do with the listener adapter? So I just co copy. Oh, oh no no no! What I was saying is copy this entire file into another file, create a new file, mm -hmm. copy it in there. Um, and then we'll start with a fresh blank main.java, but then we can, as needed, cut and paste stuff out of the other one. And let me be a little bit honest with you there. When I say as needed, 
we're not going to do it because this code does not look very good. This code does not look like the kind of code you need. <laughs> okay. So I would throw it out, but you know, I mean, I don't mean throw it out. Keep a copy of it uh, because it might be useful, especially if you when you want to rebuild the bot, you need to put everything back in. Uh, but for right now, I would suggest we start fresh because I think what we want to do is use regular expressions here. Just a moment. Okay. And by the way, for you and our zero viewers, uh, in one and a half hours from now, I will have to be going, but that's a fairly long time, so I don't think it should be an issue. Oh, you've changed it. You evil person, you. Okay, going to the new URL now. Stuff is happening. Okay, good. This is a new blank file. Um, I'm going to try editing it. Tell me what happens. Okay. I oh, cannot edit and read-only editor, so no, I, c I can't do it. Okay, I actually I actually didn't mean create a new REPL. I meant just copy the file. But okay, this is fine. You, um, yeah, since we're gonna have to start over I anyway. Copied it to that uh, one. You copied it to a different REPL though, right? Uh, yeah, I, I copied the previous one to this one. Right. The parts which we need. Yeah, yeah. I that's not what I meant, but that's fine. I meant create a new file in the old REPL called like old main .java and copy that, but this is fine. We're good. We're going to do this. So let's go ahead and create a class uh, called parse ma math. I don't care what you call it, but something like pa parse math. And if you if you can turn on sharing, do so because uh, I might be able to help you. Oh shit, this is not... Fuck. Sorry, give me a sec. The problem is when I started editing, it actually made me a copy of this. And this is not the copy, obviously, I want to be in. Uh, I want to be in your copy. There we go. Much better. And thanks to the four second delay, you can watch yourself typing four seconds delayed. Okay, what was that? Oh, just create uh, a. I, I would call it parse oh. math or parse math expression. It doesn't really matter. We just need a class to put some functions into. I'm not seeing anything, but that's, I assume, normal, I hope. Oh, shit, is this anonymous? You're not anonymous, are you? Oh, yeah, I'm anonymous. Oh, you are anonymous. <laughs> well, I've always wanted to meet you, Mr. Anonymous. Um, okay. I, don't, I still don't have an account. That's like... Okay, are you typing it? What, oh, you can see my screen. So is, does my screen look like your screen, or have I messed something up? I typed in some few keywords. So okay, okay, I'm not seeing them right now. Right, there's not. My screen just has the word public on it. Let me do a reload real quick. All right, here we go. All right, continue and hopefully I'll see what you're doing. If not, we might have an issue. So basically, if what you type doesn't show up on my screen within a few seconds you might need to get an account. It, they're free, or I don't know what's wrong, to be honest. Um, okay. I'm not seeing anything on my screen. Should I make an account now? Say again? I think you should because I don't think I think if I go to anonymous, I don't think it rec all anonymous people are not the same. Oh wow! Wow! I can't even go to anonymous. Usually, see here it just says REPL. I think I, think I have an account with me login. Log okay, let me let me see what you put in originally. Um, the URL you gave me originally was oh yeah you don't you just went straight for the um, you just went straight for the uh, REPLs. So the, the weird thing here is this actually should be uh, the same for everybody, or maybe it's not. I don't know. Whoa. Okay. So I think if you are, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Uh, give me a second here to um, cut and paste this into my lovely file whose name I always forget. Um, actually, I think I can just... Well, this is the danger of trying to out be too smart. Dun dun. Da -da -da -da. Is this you? Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is not Clear Fabulous Law. Now, this is Blind Lively Experiment. One of these uh -huh. days. That's the old one. Wait. Right. I was seeing the old one. There we go. Yay. Now, hopefully, I can see new stuff you do. Okay, so I think the first yeah. function you want is just going to be called parse expression or something, and it's going to take a string, because all of these are going to be strings, ultimately. Okay. It's actually a main um, function. You know, your main function probably is going to be the one that calls parse, but the parse is the one you're going to call over and over again, maybe. I'm not sure how we're going to exactly do this, but but um, and right now we're just testing. We're, we're going to do a lot of direct function calls. We're going to do a lot of fixed string stuff uh, until we get it working, and then we're going to allow people to put input into it. Now, I have not seen any change to your... A blind lively experiment. Am I missing something? Let me see. Uh, no. You're fine. Okay, good. So create a function. Um, uh, we just sort of need a, a template to start with. I'm still not seeing anything. Is that something's wrong? Yes, it, I just changed something now. Okay, and, and on my screen it doesn't, it looks exactly the same. <sighs> FB. Um, and you are on Cyborg A7 line, li I mean this URL here is the same as the one you're using, right? Yeah. Alright, let me reload real quick. Um, but if I have to reload every time, this is not. This is going to kind of suck. There is a way I know you can share VS code, but I don't know if you're willing to. If you want to do that, that could be dangerous. Um, okay, so now I'm seeing this. Now type in something just right away, just so I can see it. anything. I want to see if we're connected. Does not look like we are. Because so nothing is happening on my screen. Um, Does that usually show up? Yeah, it should. Um, um, Yeah, that's the whole point of Replit is, I, I mean, well, that's one of the points of Replit is everyone sees the same thing on the screen, uh, except here it's not happening until they do a reload, and obviously I can't reload every time. That's not how it's supposed to work. Um, I don't know why it's, I mean, this thing misbehaves a lot, to be fair. Uh, Repl that are constantly breaking things to make things better. So, this probably will run. Um, oh yeah, I forgot Java's very picky about that. So go ahead and call the class main if you want to. I mean, or create a new file for it, you know, whatever. So if you see a tab, you can see that invite. 
have a few heads up, you should do. Okay, go for it. I I do not see an invite tab, but yeah. that's because it's not mine. Um, that's interesting. They might have changed it now, so you can't actually uh. You can't actually automatically see someone's stuff unless they invite you, which is actually a good thing. Well, kind of. Doesn't let me annoy people randomly like I like to do, but. Okay. I don't know. I don't use the site so much, so. Okay. Maybe they changed something. Right. What the fuck? I did it again, didn't I? I don't know. God damn it. And I put it in the wrong directory again, and I don't think that directory even exists, so that's. Sort of a double fuck up. Okay. Now, if I go back to this page, there we are. Okay. Let me close this off. Da 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 da. What the fuck? Dude, I'm some my repl. Oh, maybe now I can type in it. Okay. Yeah, you can type in it. Shit. Do you see that? Yeah, I can see. Fantastic. Your mouse. That's good. I mean, can you see what I typed in? Yeah. I see where your mouse is too now. I'll go ahead and delete that. All right, cool. Um. So either change the class name or create a new file for it, or make this a private class. Doesn't any of those things will work? Um, that's fine. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Now I think this will compile, but not do anything. Yeah. Yeah, it'll burn down the water the room. No, because this isn't the main class. It's never called. So it literally does nothing. Oh. Yeah, this isn't a main class. So wait, wait, wait. Modifier private not allowed here. So you might need to declare a main class that just does n nothing for right now. I mean, the whole point of this is we're going to end up writing a function that does the parsing. All of this is just sort of, um, there's a name, not framework, there's a fancy name for it. Um, scaffolding. Um, You probably don't need, if you're going to do it this way, you're not going to need that. You mean the whole method or what? Well, let's just, if you're going to put the whole method in main, uh, that's fine. And that, that's okay. We obviously will need to fix it a little bit later. Uh, but the, the important thing is we need to write a function somehow. I um, can write it over here. Okay, okay. There we go. And so what type of function or does it? Okay. Uh, the expression. This is that's a good question actually. The return value I think is going to be a double, right? Well, the input value is going to be a string, but when it's all done parsing every. Th oh, actually, shit. Hang on. Yeah, I think the I think the output value that you want is a float, right? A double. I think actually you need is a string because you need to print it out to the panel, right? Okay. okay. Shit. The problem is um, you're going to call this function, maybe you can have another function called parse helper, but you're going to call another function that's going to receive, oh shit, you know what? That's going to be a problem no matter how we do it because. Um, yeah, I think you're right. I think it has to return. It has to take and return a string. Or we could just, uh, you know, take the double and in the main. Yeah, but the main the function we could change. Well, the problem is at some point you're going to be sending this two parts of an expression, and you can't have one of them be a float and the other one be a string. I mean, I mean, you can, 
but it's going to be very, very messy. So I agree, string to string, that's fine. So what's the argument? Um, call it, I just call it S. I mean, it's just the thing that we're going to parse, a string. And let me show you what our plan of attack is. I'm going to create a um, I'm going to create a new file called notes. So our plan of attack is um, let's say we start with this, okay? I don't see your notes. It's a, it's a it's a different file. Uh, I think I should reload my page. Oh, ouch. Okay. Oh man. Yeah, that does some weird other stuff that it, we don't want it to do. Okay, I see it now. Awesome. Yeah, and I see that your cursor's right there too. Excellent. So the idea here is we're going to look um, for the smallest chunk of this that has no parentheses. Oh, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. It's not what I meant. Uh, we're going to look for, actually, let me make this more complicated because it's going to be, this doesn't show the full, um, the range of what we're trying to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for the, th the thing that has parentheses followed by not parentheses and then end parentheses. In other words, we're going to find the tightest kind of a parentheses. Do you see what I'm saying or no? Uh, yeah, I find the what? So this would not work. Like the highest, what, what did you say? I think, uh, the, the sort of most nested parentheses. Okay, yeah. So, so this wouldn't work because it has parentheses. We can't get this expression because it has more parentheses inside of it. So the func what we would end up getting, you know, when we did this, is getting just this. Do you see how I got that? Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Okay. So then the parse function would take three fifths, and it would convert it to 0.75. So then our new expression would be. I'm I'm adding a space there, but same thing. Okay. Um, yeah. um, ah. okay. All right, so now we have two sets of parentheses. I assume we're going left to right. So now the parser is going to take this, because it's the smallest thing that doesn't have parentheses, but it is in parentheses itself, and convert this to, and i got to be a little bit careful here, I think, um, Because one problem is we have to we have to um, we have to keep order of operations correct. Um, so you got two sets of. Uh, oh, in in this in this case we're not going to have a problem. This does not uh, this does not break order of operations because there's nothing in here. Every we're using parentheses for every case where we want to do order of operations. Um, but but. What if this was a problem? Multiplication, three into four. Hang on one second. Did you send me something in chat? Yeah, do the three to four. Right? Oh, sorry. Sorry, I was loading something. I got confused. Uh, yeah, that's the problem. If you had this, like, um, well, you know what? Let's go through this example, and then we'll deal with that in just a sec. Uh, but the idea is we're not going to add all three of these numbers at once because that's that's not correct. Um, God, I've done this before, so I should know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, I know this gets confusing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. If this was like two times 0.75, then we would have an order of operations issue. I will make a note here, so if anyone's looking at this, then we'll, not that anyone is, but 
um, with that we've changed the expression to, to do this. Okay, so I think there's kind of two ways to do it. Um, okay, so we're still looking at the first non-parenthesized expression. It's this guy. Um, so we're going to parse just that part for now. And then we will look for um, power operators. Uh, we don't have to worry about parentheses because we've gotten rid of all of those. Look for power operators. Are there any here? No. Okay. So then we go down the list from, you know, it's uh, parentheses, exponentials, multiplication, division, PEDMAS, right? Uh, addition and subtraction. So now we look for multiplication operators. Are any of those there? Okay. Well, I know about that, you know, PEDMAS rule. Yeah. Right, right. So the next thing, we, there aren't any power operators in this. Are there any multiplication operators? No, uh, yes. Okay. So we look to see the two numbers that are on the side of the multiplication operators. Um, and I keep wanting to say print, but we know there's no parentheses here because we explicitly got r rid of them. We explicitly chose an expression with no parentheses. So this then becomes 1.5. So because we're looking for multiplication yeah. operators, and we know because we we know that there are not, there's going to be one operator to the left and one operator to the right. There will not be parentheses. That's the important part. Because if there's parentheses, yeah, we can't we can't we can't work with that. So then we g end up with one plus uh, 1.5, right? From the this becomes 1.5. And this now becomes one plus one point five. Yeah. So uh, the I understand. Sure. So the whole the whole expression now becomes this. So we're basically reducing it one step at a time. Okay. Now the next two steps aren't going to be very interesting. The smallest thing we have without parentheses inside of it is this. So this now becomes um, this. And then the smallest thing without parentheses, there's only one thing without parentheses now. And then um, if there are no parentheses, we send the whole expression uh, to parse. And here, since multiplication is the highest operator, I don't know what 2.5 times 7 is. You would think I do, but I don't. Um, and then that would be the answer. Do you see, sir, do you see kind of what my strategy is here? Yeah, yeah. All right, so I think the first thing we need to do in your main.java, which I'm going back to now, is we want to look for the portion, if there are, if there are no parentheses, we, that's going to be a different problem, but uh, we want to look for the smallest portion of the expression that, has, that is surrounded by parentheses but has no parentheses inside it. And I would do that using regular expressions. Because there's a, there's an easy. Well, I could do it here, but I got a sort of string. Yeah, I mean you could just you could just put a you know you could just define a string right now as a temporary s equals two plus two. I mean you know, something whatever. Or you could send it in as a as an as a as a uh, as a parameter to the parse expressions dot parse string function. Wait, 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 wait. This is supposed to be, a, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Thank you. You don't need, by the way, we're not going to, you're not going to need spaces. I mean, th they'll be nice, but we should be able to work this without spaces. Okay, fantastic time spot. Okay, that's fine. That's good, 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 good. There we go. Good. And at some point, we're going to Google for very complicated mathematical expressions. And because then if we can solve those, we're, we're, we're golden. Okay, so now I would use a regular expression to find the smallest expression uh, that is surrounded by parentheses but does not have parentheses inside it. Um, I think your parentheses aren't balanced now, are they? One, two, one, zero. No, you're fine. Never mind. Balanced, yeah. yeah. Um, good. That's a good expression to start with. Okay, so now do you know how to use regular expressions? Yeah, uh, it's, uh, you take the smallest chunk and do the... Oh, right, right, but I bet, I meant, do you know how to use regular expressions in Java in general? Uh, 
I'm pretty new to that. So. Okay. I know regular expressions. I don't know them in Java, so I guess we will Google. Mr. Google is going to be our friend. Let me get rid okay. of that. Actually, I'll keep that. Um, it's not that hard. I mean, we just, it just need to look it up. I know how to do them in Perl. Uh, I know what they are. Um, da, 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 da. I'm almost sure you're going to need to include something, though. Okay, well, this is not useful. This is just telling us what they are. There we go. Okay. There we go. So... Now, we, we are doing a little bit more than just matching a regular expression. We need to capture part of it. But let me... So what I think you want here... I've got to be careful here. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll do the wrong thing first. Pre open parentheses, thing that is not a parentheses, and open or closed, followed by a closed parentheses. Um, do you sort of see how I got this? Are you doing a space in there? Because no, there no, you don't. I was going to get rid of the space. Thing. Yeah, it's there. So it's open parentheses, and this little bracket notation means... Um, any character matching. So if this was like ABC, this would mean shit. This would mean open parentheses, ABC, close parentheses. Uh, but, and if I said not ABC, um, this would mean any character not matching A, B, or C. Does that make sense? So you put that, what is that, power? Job, so it's not it, in this case it's considered a not but yes yes the problem. carrot yeah and I think I can go over here and actually point out where that happens uh, where they use the carrot um. okay it's only if it's in brackets though if it's not in brackets it means start of uh, start of expression there we go oh I actually used the exact example they did that's the example we're using so what we want is anything except open or close parentheses, right? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, shit. If there's anyone actually watching on Twitch, if my voice is fluctuating, let me know. Uh, hopefully it'll clear up by itself, but if it doesn't, let me know. Okay, yeah. Sometimes it just happens. Uh, magic. It's I actually fluctuate as well. It's... I'm an, I'm an artificial intelligence or an artificial something. Okay. Um, so do you see how we're getting that expression to mean not uh, something? Let sorry. Me read that just a minute. Yeah, yeah sorry. sorry. I keep jumping around. I keep forgetting that other people are viewing my screen. Yeah. It's the second highlighted carrot. Well, yeah, it's the highlighted blue stuff. So you got to have the A, B, C in there, or the words is not going to work, right? You have to have, no, no, the A, B, C is just an example. You have to have the not symbol, the caret, followed by the things you do not want to match. Oh, okay. So we want, going back to your program, open parentheses, followed by anything at all except parentheses themselves. That's the only thing we disallow is other parentheses. So do you see how I sort of got that? Okay, yeah. Okay, but there's a problem. Parentheses have a special meaning to regular expressions, so you have to backslash them. Is it called the ex escape sequence in Java? Yeah, the escape no. sequence. The backslash is the escape sequence. Because we're using literal parentheses, and that, you know, that has a meaning to regular expressions. Now, this... Should I actually spit out something, right? Na a matches should spit out a string, right? Um, come on, baby. Oh, this returns true or false. Okay. Not exactly what we want. Um, so 
We actually want to we want to do a, a capture, but for right now, let's do. I have no idea what the hell this is going to do. Oh. That did not go well. What the hell does it think is wrong? Illegal yeah. escape character? Illegal escape character. Mm. I know you need to escape parentheses. I mean, I can't believe that you can get away without not doing that. Um, but, uh, something I like to do sometimes is if I know something is correct but it's not, I like to just comment it out and make a copy of it and then do it incorrectly. So this is fun. All right, let's see if you like it with parentheses, without the escape character. Ah, where to go, mommy? Okay, let's see what we're doing. Less unhappy. Modifier private not allowed here. Um, so you can't declare a. I know you can't declare a public class here, but you can't declare. A private class either all right do you mind if we change this to just be public class main because um, if we can write this function I'm sure you could you can get it into your bot right yes yeah, I can do that right so we understand the main problem here is just writing the function not you know anything else so we'll call this main we'll get rid of this and now what this does. And it might just print out the word false. Oh. Oh shit, because this is supposed to be. Um, oh, it doesn't, because this is supposed to return something. So we'll just, for right now, we'll just return the empty string. Or we won't. Okay, now let's see what this does. Seriously? <laughs> what the hell? I'm going to run it again so I get a formatted version of that. Oh, uh, wait. I'll, I'll do something. That's fine. Yeah, go ahead and go ahead and fix it. Tell me when you're ready. Well, I, I don't. I think if you. Well, actually, yeah, I think you can run it too. I, and I, I'll see the output. Our main class is empty. There is nothing. Okay, you're running it. Cannot find symbol <laughs> string z. Yeah, you you just need. That would be kind of a cool language if we, if when you used an array of something, you have to use the plural form. <laughs> that would actually be a sucky language. So, okay, false. Okay, that's getting closer to what I want. Okay, so this is basically saying the whole string does not match this pattern, which which is true. It doesn't. So now what we need to do is uh, we need to find, um, we want to actually capture a substring that does. So let's see how we're going to do that. Uh, oh, split, replace first, replace all. Yes, split is not exactly what we want. It's very close though. What we want is called capturing. Uh, oh. Whether if I'm wrong, but it's actually the whole parentheses, right? Sorry, say that again. This thing. Right, but that this string here that you've highlighted does not match this expression because it has an opening parentheses, 
and it has an end parentheses, but there are characters in between that are also parentheses, and we specifically disallow that. So this means there should be only just one, uh, one set of parentheses, right? Well, yes. I mean, for this particular line of work, there could only be one set of parentheses. But what we're trying to do is, is ask uh, Java that in this string, can you find me a substring that matches this pattern? So we're looking for a, a portion of the string that matches. And there are 3 plus 4 is one, 4 plus 5 is another, and I think those are the only two that actually match. But let's then let's see how we can do that. We're 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 getting this is getting this is yeah this is a matcher uh, void main pattern comp pattern comp seriously matcher wow this is not how I've done it but apparently okay okay so this is actually the the example we're looking for um. No, it's not. This is an example that just gives us true or false. Um, this also gives us true or false. This also gives us true or false. Yeah. Fucking hell, did someone give us an easier example here? All right, hang on. Um, Java regular expression capture. Let's just do that. All right, tutorials point's pretty good, actually, so... Um, yeah, this is the kind of thing I'm used to. Do I actually have to c compile patterns now? Um, Alright, I guess there's no way to... There was a time that you didn't have to... Comp compilation was optional. Um, but I guess this doesn't hurt anything. Um, so let me actually go ahead and say, we're going to make the regex a string itself. Um, and this, this shouldn't work, but at the rate we're going, it might. So, and then we're going to say pattern r equals regex dot, how do you do this compile shit? Um... Pattern dot compile and the final thing is a string. Still there? Hello? We've lost you. I assume you will find your way back or send me a message on Discord. Or on Are you there? I can oh. hear your voice. You're back. Can you hear me? No, you cannot. Um let me ask you over here. I think you might have done a, I heard a, like a chugging sound that wasn't me. I don't know why I'm speaking, but you can't hear me. Um, um, so for the people who are watching, um, I'm typing in something on a different window that you can't see. There we go. Can you hear me now? Uh, fudge. Um, it still says connecting. Um, let me get off the channel and get back on. Give me one sec here. Okay, now can you hear me? Now it says voice connected. I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Fun with Discord. Okay, so... Um, so I guess what I have to do here is pattern compile. Regex? I'm not happy about this. This is more complicated than it needs to be. Um, so I'm taking the regular expression, compiling it. It probably looks pretty ugly when it's compiled, but I'm okay with that. Because I think all regular expressions are beautiful. Mm. Oh, 
I think we need to probably import it. Yeah, we need to import both of these. I think I might have imported them somewhere else by mistake. No, I didn't. Okay. Alrighty. Alright, stop and restart. Yeah, one of the problems is... Okay. That actually looks okay. I still don't believe it's a correct... It's a valid regular expression, but... You know what? We can, we can we'll see what the hell happens. We, we can obviously make simpler examples until we get this all right. Okay, so now since we have a pattern, yep. So this converts the string into a pattern that Java can handle, which is to me an unnecessary step, but I don't control it. Um. Okay, I'm gonna copy this and then fix it. So, okay, so R is the pattern, and you want to match name. So, I still have trouble believing this is going to do anything, but I want to see what the matcher looks like. I'm just really into, I'm, I'm, I'm a Java object voyeur. I want to see what this looks like. And it should just say matcher or something. It won't oh. Yeah, yeah. matcher. Good deal. So now we're just, I'm just going to cut and paste some more of this code. Mm. Nope, I'm going to be even more obnoxious here. Um. Let's see what happens if we run the find command on, on the matcher. Well, we got a true out of that, which is, I guess that's good. And then we want group, and this is not an array, because they're using parentheses here, not brackets. So I guess, if this works, I will be freaking surprised. Let's see what group zero is. If this works, then we can actually go and continue and do more stuff. No match found. That's interesting because it did say it had a find and then it said it didn't. All right, so I think we can fix this. First of all, I'm gonna fix this to be real parentheses Real parenthesis, real parenthesis, real parenthesis. And the group we want to match, this is where it gets so ugly. We want to match what's inside the brackets. But this is a regex parenthesis, not a real parenthesis. This will, this should work, but it's going to just make you, it's going to make you cry. Oh, shit. What the hell? I put those escape characters in each I know, but how do you... Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take them out. I'll take them out. It's fine. I just don't know how it's going to differentiate between regular expression capture parentheses and things that are like real life parentheses. Uh, I mean, th this should have found something. Okay. Okay. Um... If you don't object, I would like to maybe do some simpler testing with regular expressions before we try to tackle this thing again. Yeah, sure, you can do it. If you yeah. Want. I mean, well, no, we want to learn about regular expressions. At least I, I thought I knew them, but I mean, obviously, JavaScript does something kind of weird with them. Okay. So. Pattern P equals pattern compile. I'm going to do something very, very simple now. Um, okay. Matcher M. Oh, come on. I'm going to re... Hang on. 
didn't do anything. Okay, usually clicking this thing formats the code, but apparently it's just going to be obnoxious. And so it's p matcher, and I'm going to match this. This should match, uh, and then I'm going to see. Let's see what this does. If I'm lucky, this will print out the string b. No match found. That's actually that's actually okay because I actually meant to put parentheses around this because you need parentheses if you want to actually capture anything out of it. No match found. Okay. Um. Let me All right, what am I trying to do? All right, let me look at this example again. And why do you need the square brackets inside the parentheses? Oh, because I'm trying to capture A, B, or C. Oh, so, okay, it doesn't capture the square bracket. It shouldn't. The square brackets have a special meaning. But there is a way to prove okay, this. Like um, yeah, the what, there is a way to see whether it's actually capturing anything, and that is just M find. That's, that's without even trying to look at a capture. That's just saying, let's look at M find by itself. That should at least be true. If that's not true, we're, we have more bigger problems. Yeah. So it is saying that I found it. Now we're going to let's change this to X, and that should now become false because um, the obviously X doesn't match ABC. So, yeah, that, that's fine. Um, so false, this th that makes sense. Um, what did it have? Well, hang on, last time when I had a B in here, what did it do for the other? I forgot now. So this should be true, but for some reason it's being a little bit wacky with this. Oh, B, it matched. I got it. Hubba yeah, hubba. What if it was the X or something? Yeah, well, when X. it was X, it didn't, yeah, because it really doesn't match. I mean, what you're supposed to do here is... You're supposed to check to see if it's found anything first, and, and then only if it's found something should you actually try to print out what it's found. Uh, if it's not found something, you're you're kind of you're doing something stupid. I'm doing something stupid, of course. That's what I meant. Okay. Okay. Good. So now, if it finds something, you can print out the first grouping. So this is good. This is working. Um, we're gonna I mean, work. Why can't it print out the false into the console? Sorry. Say that again. I mean, why, why don't it print out the false statement into the console? When I did an X? Yeah, when you type in X. Oh, it did. Uh, let me let me go ahead and, sorry, I probably went too fast. Let me go ahead and undo this crap. Okay, so you're saying if I put an X in here, why didn't I get a false? Yeah. Okay, we actually did. Um, but then we got a bunch of garbage that sort of obscured the false. So we do this. There's our false. Yeah, got an exception. Yeah, and then we got an exception that kind of overrides this. Because I'm trying to look, I mean, if it says it's not found, I mean, that's that's just bad behavior on my part. Um, so well, we will. There's a false at the top of the exception, I guess. Right. The false is printed out, Indeed. but the exception, that's the problem. The exception was so big, it sort of. So now you understand how that works, right? Sorry, was that a yes or no, or a I don't know? I didn't hear that. So I oh, I a, sorry, I asked, do you sort of see how this is working now? Oh, connection problem. Oh, okay. So, let me, let's see what's going on here. I'm showing four green bars, but can you hear me? I can say something. I will type in the Discord here in just a sec. 
Um, okay, we are we are awaiting Kaiser to rejoin us. And um, oh, you're back. Say something. Okay, you can go like do what you're doing. Okay, and you can hear me and everything, right? Yeah. Okay. Good deal. Okay, so now we're going to go a little bit, we're going to work our way up. This is a hideous expression that we're looking for. We're going to work our way up to it. So now, so what this says is capture any letter A, B, or C, just a single one, and put it, and then, you know, the parentheses says capture that and give it to me as group zero. Um, now, if I do this correctly, this should say, by the way, every so often I should be doing a download as zip, um, because in case we screw something up, and, and just to waste git space, we're going to push this to git. I don't even know where it goes, by the way, but there you are. You have a safe copy of it somewhere. Uh, if you want, you can also download a zip. So what do you think, what's the string you think this will match? It could be any character from A to F. Not exactly, because this says any character from A to C followed by any character from D to F. So something like AD would work, AE would work, BE would work, BF would work. Does that make sense? Okay, you don't need any brackets in between, right? Um, well, oh, you mean why do, why do I have the parentheses? Yeah, you have it over here, so just like dividing it, why don't you have it here? Um, I see what you're saying. Let me let me let me fix that real quick. You're right. That that was that's a different step here. So does that make more sense? Yeah, now now it's like okay. Okay, but we're not going to have a problem. But that's okay. It's it's an instructive problem. Or, or, whoa, that wasn't supposed to happen, but groovy. <laughs> it worked out. I guess we don't need the parentheses. Wow, I'm, I'm kind of surprised. Um, okay, so now we're going to get a little bit fancier. This plus sign means one or more. So what do you think this might match? can have more characters that over here. Right, go ahead and type in something. Yep, that should match. That won't work though, because I don't have a plus sign over after this one. So this is actually gonna give us a false. What? The fuck? Oh, uh, you're, very, you're very clever. I f <laughs> yeah, you, you're one step ahead of me, right. It, but you notice what we got back is BCF, not BCFE. Yeah, I, I saw that. Yeah. And that's because that's the part that matches this. The E doesn't match this. So you're saying you can have more characters? Yeah, because we're using... Right um, here, but not here. Yeah. Right, but we can because this only, this only matches the part of the pattern... Um, See, that's why it doesn't actually get it. Because we're using find, it looks for things in the middle of the string. Okay. So let me give you an example here. So I could have like, let me go back to the original example here. So this string doesn't match this regular expression, but a portion of the string does, namely this little portion here. So what we should get back is true and be. There we go. So I one thing I forgot to do is to mention that um, and actually I wasn't sure it was actually happening. So, <laughs> um, but so do you see what this is doing? It's, it's matching the part of the string that matches the regular expression. Yeah. 
Okay. Now I'm curious about something myself. What if two parts of the string match? Um, sorry, A D. So the question is, I still think we're only going to get B E because this is the first match. Um, I'm thinking I'll get B E A. Um, I'm just guessing. No, we're oh, getting no. B E. But watch this. If I if I've done this correctly. The second part, it might just be that it matches AD as the second part, but this might not work at all, so let me let me check. Yeah, unfortunately that doesn't work. I thought because it's the second time it matches, but that doesn't doesn't like that. Um, so so that that's fine. Um, now. Okay, now if I put parentheses around it, actually I'm not going to do that, that's... That gets really ugly. Um, okay. So we have partial matching. Nice. Okay. So this, which actually we can say in another way, but we'll go ahead and do it this way. This will match any string of numbers inside the string. The first string of numbers inside the string, but not the second or others. So some words. One, two, three, four. Other words. Five, six, seven, eight. I would expect this to match one, two, three, four. So there's a string of digits. Uh, it's the first string of digits in the expression. Let's see if I am correct. Yeah, it did. Okay, cool. So does that make sense to you so far? Okay, why didn't the five, six, seven appear in that? Um, it's a good question. I think. Let me see. Let me see what's going on here. Um, see, yeah, shit. Okay, let me. It's it's a damn good question. Um, because the way we have this written right now, it's only going to get the first one. I think if we do this, put parentheses around it, it'll get both of them. But the second one's going to be called group one because it's they're two separate groups. So if this works correctly, we'll get one, two, three, four, followed by five, six, seven. But I don't think it. I think I've done something wrong. Oh, oh, shit! That is weird. Uh, I need to do some sort of global here, but I don't know what I'm doing. Um, there should be a global option for this. For which one? Oh, for when you say matcher, uh, you should be able to say global, meaning don't just match the first one, match all of them. Um, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, okay, hang on. Java matcher global. That should not be a hard thing to do. In Perl, it's forward slash G, which actually might be exactly what it is in... This is the world's worst regular expression. I like it. Um, that's not what it's supposed to That's not actually correct. That's what I was doing. Pattern compile while matcher. Oh, fuck. I know what's wrong. Yeah. You have to actually do M fine more than once. So let's just go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and do this correctly. And th there's another issue that's going to come up in just a second, but this is, this is, so this should print out, every time you do find, it finds the next instance, I guess. I, let's find out. Let's, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, which is a general sort of a statement. All right. So that's what I was supposed to be doing. Does that make sense? So M find returns true or false, but it also advances where the um, where the find is. Okay. Why do you have the group over here? What does it mean? Oh, the group here, and they're using it over here too. It basically means the first matched pattern. 
in parentheses. So this will be the first match pattern. This will be the second. Oh shoot! Chips. Oops. This would be the second match. Oh, it pattern. says zero over here. So we well, only have one. Yeah. So this would probably work even without these parentheses because we're not actually we're not using the uh, the matching feature. We just want the whole thing to do it. So let's do this. We'll get the same answer hopefully. We're using a special case where we're not using parentheses, which is which is fine because we don't need them. But there we go. So does that make sense so far? And this find will just keep on searching for the next instance. Yeah, it'll return true or false. And it'll it's return. False if this group. Okay. Yeah, it'll return true if there's at least one more group. If there's at least one more find, and false if there isn't. So if we did something like this we should see no results at all because the find will fail at the very first call this won't this shouldn't give us an exception but this should fail this should say false i mean sorry there we are no output at all because m find returned false the very first time it never even tried to print a group okay um are you going to have more than uh, like one, yeah, two, three, I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay. Let's say we have a bunch of numbers, space, and then a bunch of letters. Okay, so we have something like one, two uh, that are have A, B, C in them. Okay, uh, actually, I'll just say ABBA. A little okay. tribute, tribute to the band ABBA. So what this should give us, I think, is one, two, three, four. But let me do something. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and do this. Actually, let me do this. Let me make this worse. And BABA, another very famous group that doesn't exist. So let's see what this does. This should give us one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight. If I understand what I'm doing. Oh shit. Oh, zero is the whole thing. All right, hang on. Sorry. Now I'll show you what this. Zero is the whole. It's a special case. I think one. Okay. So now what I think is going to the whole thing should be. Printed on, on the same line. Why is it on two lines? Um, because this is one match of the whole expression. This is the second match of the whole expression. Oh, it if you do, uh, when it goes into a group. Yeah. Finds one and prints the other one. Yeah, I think this is so this is yeah. where we're gonna. This is where it's gonna get ugly. Let me let me see if this does what I want. Yeah, this is what I want. Okay. Um, so, 1, 2, 3, 4, ABBA is the first match for the whole expression. Um, because the expression requires numbers, space, followed by letters between A, B, and C. So, this would not match because it's letters, sorry, it's numbers, letters, but then there's more numbers in it. So, it only, this is the only part that matches, right? Yeah. But because I put parentheses in it now, group one is going to be this part of the match. And group two is going to be this part of the match. So group one is going to be the numbers, and group two is going to be the letters. Does that make sense? Or OK. So there's two things going on here. The, multiple, the regular expression matches more than once in the string. But that's something. Every time you do a find, it advances through those um, through those multiple expressions through through each time. But then inside the expression itself, you can have sub pieces of the match. Let me let me make that clear. Oh, I get what you're saying. Let's just do so. This is what this should do now is it'll still print out group zero, but it won't print out group one and two because we don't have parentheses that are we're not capturing. And we'll probably crash because, uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, ABBA, first match. But I haven't put parentheses around it, so there's no group one or group two. So if I did this, so now what would happen is we will just print out the full matches each time, but not the little pieces of the matches because we're not putting them in parentheses. So basically what you mean is if there's zero in there, it means that the whole thing. Right. If there's no parentheses, if, it's one, it's just one part. if you put parentheses around something, it's it becomes one, yeah. one part. 
What was that? If you put parentheses around something, it becomes a part. Okay, yeah. So if you only put there's parentheses, no parentheses so Yeah, there's there's only a group zero, which is the whole thing. Oh, okay. If you only put parentheses around this, you would have a group one but no group two because you have it don't have a second set of parentheses. So this will crash. It'll print group one, but then it'll crash because there is no group two. So there we have it. One, that's the whole match. One, two, three, four is a numerical match, but there is no second set of parentheses, so it doesn't know what to do with that. Does that? Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. So now, by the way, I'm gonna have to probably go in. Now, oh shit. Let me check something. So if I put a parentheses, it means a group, right? Yes. Create a group for this specific, uh, so you can break it up. Instead of showing me the whole match, show me only part of the match. That's in parentheses. If we wanted to be really silly, we could even do this. This would say, create one group for the digits, one group for the space, which is really not necessary, and a third group for ABC plus. So in this case, we would have three groups. And the zero group always matches everything, which is sort of like the way Perl does it. So let's take a look here. One, two, three, four, ABBA, one, two, three, four, the space, ABBA, five, six, seven, eight, BABA, five, six. So do you see how we get all that? So here for the zero group, why there is no bracket? Oh, because the zero group is implicit. It's the whole match. You mean the whole string? Yeah. What do you mean? The whole regular expression match. Uh, if you have no parentheses at all, group zero will still exist. Provided the string actually matches. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's that's a special case. Zero is not like, it's not like an array index that's the first one. It's a special different case from the rest. Yeah, okay. So so zero occurs even if there's no, so if we did no parentheses here, zero would still, would still match. Um, okay, does that make sense? Yeah, so far so good. Okay. So now, we're once again going to try to get back to what we actually wanted, <laughs> which is <laughs> matching parentheses. Um, I'm going to try something really simple. This probably won't work. Oh, fuck. I know what's wrong. All right. Uh, I actually think I know what's wrong. Um, but let's go ahead and do this. Now the dot character is a special character that means any character at all. So this will match open parentheses, anything at all, close parentheses, even other parentheses. So in other words, if we do, that's a complete fucking disaster. This should match the whole thing. Oh, actually this might be very ugly, but let's, 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 let's see what this matches. Uh, and since I'm not doing any groups, we only have, um, because these are hard print, these are actual real parentheses. These are, these are not, um, these are not like grouping parentheses. These are the character parentheses. Yeah, this should be the fun. Let's see if this even works. And if not, I know what's wrong. Yep, I figured out what's wrong. Because the slash is inside of a um, a string, we need to double slash it. And I think if you look over here, um, they run into the same problem. If you want a, a single slash, you actually put a double slash in it because the string quoting itself will remove one of the slashes for you. Mm -hmm. I, I'm ju it's just ugly, but I've, I've, in Perl, there's some cases where you have to put eight backslashes because they get reduced to four, two, and then one. Um, but here, I think only we can get away with two of them. So now let's see if this gives us what we want. Well, you've got to put eight backslashes. Oh, there's some place in Perl where you, there we go. There's some place in Perl where just because everything is removing a layer of backslashes, you have to end up putting eight before something to make it hard, the, you know, to make it a, to make it the character instead of the, the actual, think of it as an actual parentheses. Um, that was just a fun fact or not so fun fact. But do you see what's going on here now? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Okay, so it's basically matching 
parentheses, anything, in parentheses. So, and if we had more crap out here, it wouldn't match that because, uh, but let's do this, let's do this, let's do. So now we should have two matches and the six, seven, and eight won't show up because they're not in parentheses. So let's do this. Actually, it might be worse than that, hang on. This might not do what I want. Yeah, the problem here is you have open parentheses, a bunch of stuff, Open parentheses, a bunch of stuff, and then a closed parentheses. So technically the whole thing is considered one match. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. Because I did I said you could have anything in here. I didn't say you can't have parentheses. So now um let me Okay. Why do you have the star for? Oh star means any sequence of characters. Dot by itself would mean one character. So if I just said... You got both the dot and the star here. Right. So if I just did dot... And this this would be a fun little thing, actually, that happens. I'm kind of curious as to what it will return. Um, it only allows parentheses followed by a single character and parentheses. Oh, okay. So in other words, if I did something like the hell did I just do? If I did this, and it doesn't even matter because we're not doing anything with the math, it should return 7, 8, 9, and X because those are the only things that match open parentheses, single character, close parentheses. There we go. So the star says one or more characters. And let's go ahead and look at that over oh, here. Oh, yeah, okay. It's another one of those... Where the hell did it go? Yeah, well, they have it in here as dot star. Did we have a... I thought we had something open that actually showed us what the special modifiers were. And I might have just closed that. So let me... I do a ton of crap. So the last time we did, we didn't use those ex escape sequences. Remove them out. Well, oh, the last time... Now again. Well, the last time I was using single escape sequences, which didn't work. But uh, the it worked, right? Like, you removed everything. Uh, no, it doesn't. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and remove this. Now you'll see it's going to match something completely different. Every single character will now have its own line. If, I, if I'm right, which I could be wrong. Yeah. Because this says match a single character. Because these parentheses are part of the regular expression, if you want to, um, if you want to say the character, open parentheses, you have to do this. This is like, this is where it gets ugly. I was doing it with a single backslash, and that didn't work, but the double backslash does work. Uh, okay. Does that make? I know it looks horrible, but do you see? Do you see the difference between the open parentheses, the character, and open parentheses as a grouping? inside of a regular expression. Yeah, yes. Okay. So now... Oy vey. This, this is just hideously ugly. Now I want to say open parentheses, not open parentheses, or close parentheses, uh star, any number of those, followed by closed parentheses. So if I'm correct, this will actually give us what we want. But it, it's very, I know it's very ugly. There's just, it just is. And it does. It gives us everything that's in parentheses, but doesn't have inside it its own parentheses. Oh, okay. <laughs> does, does that make sense? Do you have any, it's like a list of expressions when to use and yeah, th I think w we had it open, and I actually kind of feel bad that I somehow managed to close it. Um, you uh, just send me those the, the links in my Discord. Yeah, I will send it in chat on Replica because I can't I can't copy and paste between this VM and the other one and my real machine, which is probably a good thing, but uh, still kind of ugly. Okay, hang on. This is a, okay, god damn it. 
Why do I do this? Do I still have it open? Maybe? Mm. Nope. Obviously, it's going to be in my history because I do have it somewhere. Oh, hang on. Did I save it? Nope. We will find this. Or maybe it was the... There it is. So these are all the like funky meta characters and stuff. I will send this to you in uh, Replit chat, and I assume you can copy it from there. Okay, I don't think it's important. Because I can't, I can't get into my yeah. There it is. There you go. Um, okay. Hopefully, let me know if that didn't work. I, I can make the extra step to try to get it into Discord. Uh, I, I intentionally don't connect my VM with my real machine too much because it would be really dangerous. Because I do all sorts of evil things on my real machine. Okay. So, does this... I mean, it's ugly, but do you understand what we're trying to do here? I just... Yes, you did. That's fine. Um, do you understand what we're trying to do here? Uh, yeah. We're trying to find all the parenthesized expressions that in and of themselves don't have parentheses. Uh, sort of the most nested set of parentheses. So now we can probably go back to your much nicer um, example. And let's see. I'm going to uncomment this, but we're going to need to get rid of my, my both of the these things that are crap. Okay. So pattern P... I'll, come on, I'm going to see if I can do select all, reformat. Nothing happens. Got to love it. Um, and so this is just going to be now name. And now let's see if it, if it does what we want. Of course, we're not done yet. This is just the first step. Okay, cool. That is what we wanted. Okay. Um, okay, so now... Um, so again, M group 0. M group 0 is still going to be a string. Um, I don't know if I can even do this. Um, will this work? Can I uh, identify a string? Can I re-declare re a string in the middle of a while loop? Well, let's find out, actually. This is much easier just to do it and see what yes. happens. Otherwise, you'll get an error over here. Me okay, so let's do this. I actually had one extra parenthesis, so that doesn't count. See, the problem is I'm going to be redefining part each time. Oh, it's, it's fine with that. Okay. Okay. Um, so now, and we'll go ahead and print it out because it's kind of useful. And let me just run that real quick. So now uh, we have to look at order of operations. So the first thing we need to look for is, um, oh, Jesus, fuck. Um, okay. I'm going to just go ahead and write it out, and then, then we'll actually do something with it. Um, the, the problem I'm having here is, can you, do you know what the regular, I mean, I shouldn't say do you know, can you figure out what the regular expression is for a number? Let me think. Uh, it's, it's pretty ugly, actually, it turns out. You want me to type in over here? Yeah, type it anywhere, it doesn't matter. We're just, we're just playing around right now. 
I mean, I, I know what it is. I know the answer. I just want to see if y you can come. There's a lot of things you have to consider which are just insanely ugly. I wonder if someone's actually created that, like, number match or something. But anyway, it's not that. It's not impossible. Just you have to think about a lot of different things. You want a number in a bracket, though? No, this is just a number. Any number, you should be able to match any number that's so any real number. So I'll give you, you want to give you some examples? Yeah, I don't really understand. The commas aren't part of it. Those are examples. Of, can you find a regular expression that matches all of those and anything else that could be considered a number? Uh, and I, uh, we don't have to worry about engineering notation. That's a, that's even uglier. But anything that would be considered a proper, you know, real number. Well, those like this. those are hard parentheses, though. The numbers n don't normally have. Let me let me let me help you out here. This is. Okay, we're going to start with the wrong answer and build our way up to the right answer. Um, so any string of digits is pretty cool for a number, right? Yeah. So this matches a whole bunch of numbers. This matches any uh, positive whole number, right? Correct, yeah. Um, but it doesn't match negative numbers and it doesn't match decimals. So here's yes. where it gets really, really ugly. Um, well, th this the first part's not that hard. What this says is uh, a minus sign, but the question mark means there can be either zero or one minus signs. In other words, there can be a minus, but there doesn't have to be a minus. can have both positive and right, negative if, if numbers. Right, so if there's no negative sign, that's fine. If there's a negative sign, that's fine. You can't have two negative signs, though. The question mark means zero or one exactly. So either one negative sign or no negative signs. But anything beyond that, it's going to get confused. Does that make sense? All right, yeah. Okay, and then we do the same thing here, but again, dot in this question is the... So it would also be followed by up to one decimal point. And then, what does it mean? oh, this means you are allowed to have a decimal point, but you don't need it, just like with the minus sign. Okay. So, right now we're at, at the point where we can match this, 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 let me put a comma there, sorry, and this. We can match the number one, two, three with either a minus sign before it or not a minus sign before it, and either with a decimal point at, sorry, I need a comma there with a decimal point after it or no decimal point after it. So so right now we can match positive and negative integers. Uh, and if you want to put a dot in front of them, that's fine too. Good so far? Yes, yeah. Um, and then, sorry, I didn't do that. After the decimal point, you're allowed to have any number of digits. And the star means potentially zero. So you don't need to have a digit, but if you, you can have as many digits as you want, zero through infinity. So now we can match one, two, three, so point. Star. The star means, yeah, star, star, star means, means. you can have a zero or any other digits? Zero or Get more. Right. Means zero or more matches. It's like the plus sign, but it doesn't require that. Oh, actually, hang on. So you cannot have below than zero, right? Uh, well, there's no such thing as having like uh, you can't have negative one match. You can't have negative one digits. You either have one digit, two digits. You know, if you're counting something, uh, the lowest number you can count is zero. So this says the digits you need z at least zero, but up to infinity digits. Okay. So this will match pretty much anything, any number. 
So this will match point. So this will match like 100.75 uh, because this matches zero minus signs. This matches the digits one zero zero. This matches the dot, and this matches the this part here matches the seven five. But there's a problem, and I'm going to leave it the way it is though. You cannot match this point five one two. Because this part here says I need at least one digit before the decimal place. And I'm okay with that. I, I th you really shouldn't, no one should be writing numbers like this. But if you really want them to mm -hmm. let me know and we can change this plus to a star so you don't need any uh, digits before the, the decimal. So it's up to you. I, I, I think we should insist upon having a digit there. You can remove it if you want to. Okay, so you're okay with this being considered a number? Yeah. Okay, we'll put a star there. But usually you're supposed to write that as 0 0.512. You're not supposed to start a number with a decimal. But now we will allow that. Okay. Um, so do you see how this can, this should be able to match any real number at all? Yeah. Okay. And so now we will just say pattern. I'm, I'm being extremely bad, bad about this by not even bothering to make it a separate string, but we don't really need it for anything except to, whoa, yo mama, the hell? Ah, okay, hang on. Close quote, close parentheses, semi. Oh, there we go. Okay, so this is something that will match a number. Um, and did I screw that up? I did screw that up. Sorry. We d we don't we don't want to compile it quite yet. There's there's a problem here. Yeah, we just need this as a string. Okay, so now. So the things we're going to look for are, are a number, power sign, you know, to the power of another number. So how do you think we're going to find that? A number and a power sign. Yeah, we're looking for a uh, power sign with numbers on either side. So we're looking for something like uh, 4 to the 5th, but we can even have something like minus 4.005 to the 6.23. I mean, that technically is a, uh, that technically is a number to another, a power of another number. Okay, well, yeah. So do you see how we would look for something like that? Yeah, well, the nice thing is because we already have that, we don't need to rebuild it. We can just say number plus caret, and that's a hard caret, plus number. In other words, some number followed by the caret sign followed by some number. Oh, oh, oh yeah, uh, yeah, I get it now. Yeah. Right, we're breaking it up into two basic pieces. Um, and actually, we need, we need to do a little bit better than that. Because we need to capture the numbers. We, we need to know what number this is and what number this is that is being separated by the, uh, the caret sign. Uh, but, you know, actually, hang on, we don't need that. We can be very clever here. We can do a, um, yeah, we can use the split command the the string split command with, without having to go through that garbage so yeah so I'll spend 20 minutes so that that's actually gonna be a lot easier if part split this because this is just a character we, it's not a regular expression 
So do you know what's how, what string split does? Well, it uh, basically splits a string. Right. Into? Right over here. Right, but what what, is, what I, I actually I don't remember what is the out what is the return value of the split? Is it, it's it's a, an array, right? Yeah, it splits into two parts. If there are two. I thought it was two or more, but I mean in, in our case it's only going to be two. Um, but the re the return here is going to be, an array, right? Uh, it is now 1 o'clock p.m. Mountain uh, Daylight Time. No, Mountain Standard Time. Um, and I should, okay, I'm going to take a break for like, uh, are you are you down with a break of one hour or is that going to screw you over? Well, okay, I'll take it. I'm trying to take a break. Okay, I mean, do you want to take a break for an hour or do you want to just stop for today? Or either, sorry, do you want to just stop and we'll then... stop it for today. Okay, we'll stop it, and then if you want to come back, you can. All right, everyone, I'm going offline. I may or may not be back in an hour. We'll figure that out later. Bye for now.